do I have that I can use to make a difference? So, you know, we thought that getting involved with compassion, sponsoring a child, we were going to be a make a difference. And what we found is that through, through that, compassion has given us um, a story and this purpose. Well, God wants us to do our gifts because He wants to make the world a better place. Um, we don't consider ourselves happy very much, but um, because we have this priority, both of, of the type of family we wanted to be, the type of people we wanted to be as followers of Jesus, as parents, um, Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. And so um, you have to move your treasure around to put your heart in the right place. As people are thinking about whether to sponsor a child, I would want to Good morning. Isn't she cute? I think that girl is so cute. In 2001, I heard Sue Johnson give a temple talk about the, a child she and uh, Michael were sponsoring through Compassion International. She stirred my heart, and I took a child packet home and prayed about sponsoring the nine-year-old boy that was in the picture. Nine years and many, le many letters later, Raji left the program to continue his studies while living closer to his father. I then received 13-year-old Grace until she started a jewelry business with her sister in 2016. My current child is Maureen. We have been corresponding since she was six. Of course, in the beginning, she dictated the letter to her teacher, um, and now she's writing or printing her own letters. Um, she will be 11 this November, and I have seen her growth in her writing abilities, her use of the English language, and in her spiritual growth. All of these children have been so grateful for the support to meet their spiritual, emotional, and physical needs. Compassion International is an organization dedicated to releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. I would like to invite you to consider sponsoring a child to release them from poverty on the weekend of the 12th and 13th. On the table in the narthex, there are pictures of a few of the children that we will receive packets for this week. We will also be lifting up African Children's Choir. You can find out more about both of the organizations when you stop by the tables in the narthex next week. The child packets will be arriving on Tuesday from both organizations and will be on the tables next weekend. A verse from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Do not forget to do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And don't forget to come down for AED training after the service. Thanks, Andrea. Good morning. Morning. Everybody go, did anybody go eat breakfast yet this morning down at the Flying Drive-In? Neither did I. I wasn't up that early. So, um, is my mic on? Everyone can hear me, yes? Is it loud enough? Not, or, okay. So, a couple announcements we've got going on. First one, Bob let me know this morning that we'll have Pastor Dan Auden as our kind of bridge interim pastor until we find a more... Um, permanent interim until we find a permanent senior pastor. So um, we're excited to have Dan back, helping us out, filling in. So that'll be great to get to work with him again and have him here and um, helping us out. And then a couple other things we got going on as far as you stuff, since that's what I really do. Um, we have, our summer trip is coming up, June 23rd through the 27th. We're going up northwest Wisconsin 
we're going to stay in an um, Airbnb house with 10 kids and myself and um, Christine, Steve. And we're going to hang out. We're going to go do some fun adventure stuff. We're going to have a service day in Superior. And we are going to still do some extra fundraising for that and for future trips. So if you read the newsletter or saw it in the email and the announcements and all that kind of stuff, we are going to do our drive-through dinners again this summer. Woohoo! And um, I have an order form online. So it was in the newsletter. And then if you're like, oh, I lost the newsletter. Oh, I didn't get the electronic newsletter. You can go to the website and then you can go to the youth um, or the faith formation page, and you can go into that pull down menu, click on that, and then from there you can click on the form in the youth page. It's right there to click on, and it'll send you right to the online form. And so we're doing June 30th, and then July 12th, and the following week. I don't have them memorized, but um, we're doing. I do have the menu memorized. First week we are doing Philly steak sandwiches and Philly chicken, and then we are going to do hamburgers and brats. And then we were going to do a pulled pork sandwich. And everything comes with a bag of chips, a water, and a cookie. And the suggested donation for that is $10 a meal. And so you can sign up and then pay when you drive through and donate that way. Um, it's just a great way. If you like to eat and don't like to cook, we're here for you. Okay? I'll, I'll help with all the cooking in that Wednesday. Or if you want to go to the concert in the park, pick up your meal before you head down to the concerts. There's concerts in the park every one of those Wednesdays that we're doing the meals. Or if you're just like, I don't like people that much on a Wednesday, and I just want to pick up my meal and go home and eat it, you can do that too. Okay, whatever trips your trigger, we're all good with it. So um, with all that, I don't know if there's any other major announcements besides Andrea mentioned quick about the AED training. So the AED machine, you can look right behind you. It's right back on that post. That's a cardiac arrest machine, basically, right? Am I saying? And so... If anybody were to have any kind of cardiac issue, if we, the more people that we have trained to use that, the quicker we can respond to somebody that's having an issue. And it's really a simple um, machine to use. So if you have any interest in all getting trained on that, you can head downstairs after worship, and Andrea will be down there showing a pretty short video and having a pretty quick lesson on how to use that machine. So I think that's all the announcements that we really have. We'll begin our worship with our call to worship. You guys can stand up for that. We are gathered in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess. Have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And you guys can probably be seated if you like for the opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ you turned death into life and defeated victory, and defeated into life and defeated into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis, the third chapter. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, with the Lord there is plenteous redemption. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and his disciples would not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out and restrained him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by their ruler of demons has cast out demons. He called them to him and spoke to him them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but, is, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder, plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. For they have said, he, is, he has, un, has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent him and called to him. A crowd sitting around him was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are, and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mo- mother and brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't like standing up there to talk. So, <clears throat> wow. Have we been through it the last couple of weeks? And then we get this gospel reading, which I, when I first read it, I was like, well, that fits. And, but it fits because it's a constant state. It's not just because of the last couple of weeks that we've had with different changes and people leaving and words being said and this and that and back and forth. It's the fact that we are all together one big family. And when we have differences, sometimes they get blown up. You know, like, so... I look at it this way. I worked at a Bible camp many moons ago, and I've talked about it many times around here. And so I worked for Ingham Okoboji Lutheran Bible Camp. So I worked at the Okoboji part of the Ingham Okoboji Bible Camp, and then there was a bunch of people that worked at the Ingham part. There are two separate camps. So one is on the big lake of Okoboji. It's grand. It's beautiful. We have all this fun stuff to play with on the lake and this big space, big everything. And then there was Ingham, which I love Ingham. Ingham was this little hole in the wall camp out in the middle of nowhere. And it had a small little lake, but they had a pool, so that was pretty cool. But their staff was a lot smaller than our staff. We had a staff of about, when I was working there, about 50. And they had a staff of about 20. And so their staff, we went through staff training all together. We bonded. We had a good time. And then we'd split off during our staff meeting and the Okoboji staff would go over here, the Ingham staff would go over, do their thing. And then at the end of it all, we'd split up. Okoboji stayed at Okoboji, Ingham went over and did their thing at Ingham. And as the summer went on, the the Ingham people got really tight because there's only like 20 of them. So they did everything together all the time and they were tight little knit group. And then there was our big staff of Okoboji and we did a lot of stuff together. We went prop room bowling, got dressed up all crazy and wild, and we went off and did things. We always invited the Ingham people, but they didn't always come because sometimes they felt like they were a little bit better than us. Not better, but they just didn't want to hang out with us because they had their own tight-knit little family. And, but here's the thing. Every week, a handful of Okoboji people would get sent over to Ingham because they, they just didn't have enough staff over there. And a handful of the Ingham people, and sometimes it was just to intermix us, and a handful of the Ingham people would get sent over to Okoboji. And then we would get sent out on day camps together to go lead vacation Bible school. And we'd have to get along. 
And we get along because we had this common denominator that we were all there for the same reason. We were all there to share the love of Christ to everyone that we came in contact with. We'd sing songs, we'd do silly dances, silly skits, and we'd intermix and we'd mingle and it would be wonderful. And then we'd go back off to our own little places and the Ingham people would be tight, the Okaboji people would be tight, and that was okay. We had these differences of opinions, we had these differences of like my camp's better than your camp and your camp is smelly and whatever. But we'd always, some of my best, closest friends from my time at camp are actually the people I went over and worked with at Ingham. And we just had a blast and we intermixed together and we had a great time. A house divided, it sounds terrible. We don't wanna have a house divided. We don't wanna have people saying this and people saying this. and. When I look at it, like, it's kind of like the great debate, which is better, Coke or Pepsi, right? Or which is better, the Badgers or the Gophers? I wore my Gopher, I brought my Gopher mask just for that. Because that's in our house. In our house, it's Badgers, Gophers, All right? We even have in our sunroom, we have a Badger on the wall with the Gopher underneath. Maria says the Badger's up higher because the Badgers are better. I say the Gopher's down below because he's uppercutting the Badger <laughs> from below. You know, differences of opinions, all right? But we're really not a house divided. We just have fun. It's a fun little thing, all right? Or which is better, Snickers or Mars bars? I don't know. Pick your poison. There's this McDonald's Burger King, you know? We have these little things that can divide us so so much, but yet they are small. But when we come back to the main thing is we all like to eat, so it doesn't really matter which is better, the Snickers or the Mars bar or the McDonald's or Burger King, or we all like our sports teams or we all like this or that. The common denominator is we all, like we all love sports, we all love food, and our common denominator is we all love Jesus. We love Jesus. That's why we are here. That's why we're in this place. We're in this place to celebrate Jesus, to celebrate our love for him, to be able to shout it from the mountaintops, to be able to go out from this place energized and ready to go to spread the good news and to act like Jesus. I know I fall short of that sometimes. I know we all fall short of that. And we need to be reminded of it. And that's why we come back here to worship him, to get fed, to have our fellowship. And we're gonna continue to do that and we're gonna move forward, we're gonna rise up, and we are not gonna be squashed because we are the body of Christ. The body of Christ rises up, and we share the good news, and we come together as a, a unit. And it's, we are St. John. We have Sacred Heart. We have St. Peter's in town. We have Trinity Baptist, Bible Baptist, but again, our whole overarching goal is that we all love Jesus. And so we can come together because we love Jesus. And that's the best thing ever. It gives us so much hope, so much compassion, joy. It gives us peace. And when we come together as a body of Christ, we're able to do amazing things. Just like at the end of the gospel, when Jesus says, well, who's my mother and brother and sister? You know, what What? A, I'm with all my mothers and my brothers and my sisters because we are all one big family here to do God's work and here to go forth and spread the good news. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and remind yourself we are here to spread the good news and we are the body of Christ united together to spread the love and the joy and the peace onto everyone that we meet. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of holiness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardeners, waterways, creatures near to us in diverse forms of all life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the, uh, the natural world with re reverence, seeking restoration with human di divisions and cause harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, we pray for those who oppress, who are oppressed in, oppressed or are in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. God of righteousness, we pray that this holy house of worship set our gaze upon this e things eternal, that in thanksgiving your mercy may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon... That's the same one. Repeat it. We'll do that one again. Keeping in God's commandment to pray for others, we ask you to include the following in our prayers. Alexis, Bob, Linda, Mike, Pam, Steve, Tiffany, and St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Monona, Wisconsin. God of all ages, in your goodness, you have set us faithful, set us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. There we go. The peace of the Lord be with you. You guys can share the peace, how you may feel, feel free to fit to share peace. Peace with all of you. Now offering. So plates and then go and share the music.
The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you. We praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. What did I skip a part? We're gonna go here. So bear with me. So Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. So on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord God took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying, Come and eat, and do this in the remembrance of me. Then again after supper, he took the wine, giving thanks. He said, This is my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now I think we're on the Lamb of God.
God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with, the, in, in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. The, hope, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. May you go in peace and remember the poor. Thanks be to God.